that what we're going to move on to is the glomerulus Bormann's capsule and ultrafiltration, and then we're going to move on to the proximal convoluted tubule with selective reabsorption. So first of all, just to kind of refresh your memory, this is a very basic diagram of a kidney tubule. So you've got your glomerulus, which is that knot of the pyrrhus, and it is a real tight knot of the pyrrhus. You've got your Bormann's capsule and Bormann's space. You've got your proximal convoluted tubule, your very badly formed impenly, your distal convoluted tubule, and then your collecting duct. And more than one nephron can lead into one collecting duct, and then eventually that will go off um, to, the, to the bladder. So anything that is going to journey its way down here is potentially going to become urine. So this is filtrate inside here. And then eventually if it goes down the collecting duct, and as I said, that will be then go off to the bladder and become urine. So we're going to focus on the glomerulus, which is that knot of peruse and Bormann's capsule with ultrafiltration. Now, your blood is coming into the glomerulus via the afferent arterial. Essentially, this is now become filtrate and would eventually become urine. 
Now there is a size limit on this, which is 69,000, something called the Prima threshold. Anything with an earth dome mass less than 69,000 is small enough to be pushed out of the mass. So that includes both the blue, the blue colours, certainly water, ions, uh, amino acids. It doesn't include large proteins, so what's called plasma proteins, and we saw those when we did tissue fluid formation. They're the things that cause the oncotic pressure pulling water back in to um, the capillary. So anything with a mass of less than 69,000 is pushed out. Now there are lots and lots of layers here. It's very difficult to kind of understand how these things, two, two things connect. Because anything that's pushed out here doesn't have the option of escaping. It can't get out into of, like the surrounding tissues or anything. Because this inner membrane of the uh, Golden's capsule actually has a bunch of cells called podocytes and they actually have these finger-like projections that wrap around the capillaries of the glomerula. So if you think about holding a tube, anything that gets pushed out of the tube kind of goes through your fingers and is then kind of out of here. So if we looked at the layers of that, you'd have the, the capillary of the, um, of the glomerulus, and also you've got the fenestrations in there, the pores, that will allow certain things through. And then you've got something called the basement membrane, which is made up of glycoproteins, and that kind of wraps around it, it's like a sheath covering um, the capillary. Um, now that is part of uh, the Bolin's capsule rather than the glomerulus. The glomerulus is just endothelium of the capillary. And then you've got these podocytes, which are cells which sit around here. I'm drawing these very badly. So if I if I showed you it kind of um, covering it, uh, if we think about this as being like a 3D um, uh, capillary, so those podocytes have these weird projections that I am drawing very badly. Indeed, and it wraps, it wraps around. So probably a better way of trying to draw it is if you think about me wrapping my hands around these tubes, and that is my hands are part of the Bowman's capsule, and I'm wrapping around the blood vessel. Okay, so anything that manages to leak through my fingers or gets pushed through my kind of fingers will then be in the um, the tube in the uh, capillary. Okay. So my hands wrapped around there would be part of the bronze capsule, not part of the glomerulus. Okay? And we'll let some things get pushed out. And if they're out here, then they're in that golden space. Okay? So that's ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration is just filtering out in an ultra way, doing, you know, massive of it, filtering out pretty much everything. So then we're going to have a look at selective reabsorption. So we've got rid of all of these things, all of these things are now in the filtrate. We don't want to excrete these, we don't want to pass this down the urine. We do want to get rid of the urea, we want to take these things back. So we are going to selectively reabsorb the glucose and we're going to selectively reabsorb the ions. We're going to move, uh, selectively reabsorb the amino acids, sorry. We're going to move some ions, and in the process of moving ions, if you remember, if you move ions and solutes, you um, increase the, uh, reduce the water potential. If you move more, if you move the ions out, you increase the water potential. So water will move. In, in other words, we're going to move some ions and solutes in order to create a water potential gradient, so then water will move. Okay? So in the proximal convoluted tube, you reabsorb about 65% of the water that you just squeezed out, okay? So, we're going to have a look at this. We're going to have a look at the section of the proximal convoluted tube. So here's one I drew earlier. Um, so, we're coming from the glomerulus. So this is the inside of the tubule, okay? And these are the cells that make the proximal convoluted tubule themselves. So if we have a look at this view, this is inside, so all of these are these four rings, these microvilli on these cells, and that's inside there, okay? So, and you'll have blood vessels kind of on the outside like that. So this is the filter. 